Hello, good evening. I'm a biochemist at the University of Basel, and I'm interested in how bacteria evolve. I'm going to offer you a perspective of a scientist this evening, but I'm going to start with telling you a story. It is a very sad story. Three years ago, here in Basel, a woman in her 60s, let's call her Monica, walked into the university hospital here in Basel feeling unwell. In hospital, she developed an infection, and despite she was treated with antibiotics, some of the best and most expensive antibiotics, as well as, in desperation, old-fashioned antibiotics that haven't been used for years, Monica died. She died here in Basel of a bacterial infection. The bug that killed her is called Klebsiella pneumonia, and it is a very common bug. It's found in the mouth, it's found in the intestines, on the skin. The bug that killed Monica is here in this room with us this evening. How can this be that in one of the most developed countries on earth, one of the richest, in one of the best hospitals in the planet with the best trained doctors and nurses, Monica died of a common infection? How, I ask you? And the answer is that you killed Monica. You and I killed Monica. How? How many of you have taken antibiotics in your lifetime? Every time you take an antibiotic, you make that antibiotic a little bit less effective for the next, next person. Some of the bacteria survive, and those bacteria that survive, by the power of Darwinian evolution, get a little bit more resistant to antibiotics. So, just imagine a world in which no antibiotics existed. In the 20th century, antibiotics have actually eradicated or minimized many of the diseases that killed our ancestors, at least in the developed Western world. How many of you, if just 10% of bacterial infections killed you, how many of us would be here this evening? Look around you. How many would not be here this evening? And this is a scenario that our children and grandchildren are facing in the 21st century. That antibiotics through resistance are not useful anymore. To analyze the situation, it's useful to consider another story, and that is the story of the tragedy of the common. What is a common? A common is a fertile piece, piece of grassland where you can bring your cows to graze. And in this common, one of the herders decided that he would bring a couple more cows because he could make a bit more of a profit. And the extra cows that he brought into the common actually ate grass, which meant that other cows had a little bit less grass to eat, which means that they grew less well and less fat. All cows became that little bit thinner. And to compensate for that loss, and taking the example from the first herder, other, other herders said, I could bring in another couple of cows. With the consequence that through individual benefit and profit of each herder, in total, on average, all herders lost 
profit and had thinner and thinner cows. And the grass disappeared and the ground was eroded and all herders became poor. The point of the story here is that individual profit and short-sightedness can actually lead to long-term loss for the whole community. And this is an essence that is applicable not just to the case of cows on a common or the use of antibiotics, but it is a question that is widely applicable to many of today's social and global problems. So what can we do about it? How can we address this? Today, I'd like to offer you just three suggestions of what we can do about it. The first suggestion is scientists should communicate more clearly and better and more widely. This is why I'm here tonight. Misuse of antibiotics when they are not needed contributes to antibiotic resistance. Every time you've used an antibiotic for the common flu, which is a virus and not treatable by antibiotics, you have contributed to antibiotic resistance. Antibiotics are widely used, abused, and misused. For every packet of antibiotic that you finish here in Switzerland, somebody in France finishes four. Probably totally unnecessarily. Even worse, clinically useful antibiotics today in many countries of the world are actually used to fatten cows and make them grow better and animals and this is a huge problem to antibiotic resistance two science needs to be promoted good science requires a good reputation but who provides reputation each one of us is both a receiver and a giver of reputation. You can give reputation to good science. You can give reputation to those that are socially responsible, those that are doing well. And so you can contribute to good science. Third, take action. Action can be in many forms. You can develop new antibiotics. I'm trying to do that. You can use antibiotics well, following the guidelines. But you can also take action more widely in many, many different ways. For example, demand action from those that have the power to do so. Demand that the people in your community act responsibly. You can also very powerfully take action by example. I started my talk tonight by the story of the tragic death of Monica. I'd like to ask three things off you to end on a good note. First, support science by taking interest in the world. The world is a very interesting place. Speak to scientists. Two, take action. Do things by example. Three, support those that do examples. These are three easy steps, but very important ones for us, for our children, 
for our grandchildren. Thank you.